In my last two resort guides, we covered all of Walt Disney World's value and moderate resorts, but I know there's a lot of prospective Disney World vacationers looking for the best possible experience, even if it breaks the bank, who may need a helping hand in deciding which of Disney World's most luxurious resorts is the most worthy of the additional cost. Hi, I'm The Frugal Brit, and for this video I'll be providing an idiot's guide to Walt Disney World's deluxe resorts to complete the trilogy, and hopefully by the end of the video you'll be able to decide if any of these eight resorts are right for your vacation. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future guides, news, reviews, and other Orlando vacation content. So by now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll understand that all on-site resorts fall within either the value, moderate, or the deluxe categories. But for this final video, we'll be focusing on just the eight uniquely themed deluxe resorts, those being the Contemporary Resort, the Grand Floridian Resort, the Polynesian Village Resort, the Wilderness Lodge Resort. These four are in the Magic Kingdom Resort area. And then you have the Epcot Resort area, which contains the Beach Club Resort, the Yacht Club Resort, and the Boardwalk Inn Resort. And then on its own, in the Animal Kingdom area, you have Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. So guests staying at a deluxe resort, unsurprisingly, will enjoy all the same on-site benefits as the other categories. I'll leave a link in the description in case you need a refresh on these. And I'll also leave a link in the description with a guide to visiting Walt Disney World during the pandemic, as not all services are available and not all resorts are open. In a nutshell, the deluxe resorts, when being compared to the moderate resorts, generally improve upon the theming, luxury, amenities, pool areas, dining options. The rooms are accessed internally and feature balconies. There's enhanced transportation options. To avoid quite a bit of repetition this time round, rather than outlining all of the unique deluxe resort features, I will instead provide a detailed guide in the video description. Before I get into the resort tours, do keep in mind that this video is focused on the deluxe resort hotels and not the deluxe villas category, so that means the likes of the Riviera, Saratoga Springs and Old Key West will be covered in a different video, and also we'll only be looking at the Disney-owned resorts at Walt Disney World, so the likes of the Four Seasons and the Swan and Dolphin Resort will also be covered in a separate video. We'll start my resort tour over in the isolated Animal Kingdom Resort area, where you'll find Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge next door to the Animal Kingdom theme park. It contains two separate villages, which are the original Jambo House built in 2001, and then you also have the Kidani Village built in 2009 over to the west side of the lodge, made up of Disney Vacation Club villas. Its phenomenal theming aims to capture the feel of an African safari adventure throughout the resort most impressively within its culturally rich lobby area, featuring a huge collection of African artwork. The main attraction for this resort is of course the opportunity to view over 30 species of African wildlife within the four separate savannas, and these animals are viewable from the lobby, the hallways and even your rooms if you upgrade to a savannah view room. On the east side of Jambo House, you have the Uzima Pool, surrounded by palm trees with zero entry pool and water slide, hot tubs. And you also have the Samawati Springs Pool over in Kadani Village, which is slightly smaller, but benefits from having a better slide and interactive water play area. There's also tons of other impressive activities available at this resort. Whilst not being the most colorful, the resort's theming is reinforced well within its guest rooms, which are more rustic by comparison to the other deluxes and very well decorated, and you can make a strong case that they are the most impressively themed rooms in Walt Disney World. There's a sliding door that separates the washroom area in addition to the bathroom area, which not all the deluxes provide. Guests also have the option of upgrading their standard view rooms to a savannah view, where at certain times you'll be able to view the animals. Animal Kingdom Lodge guests can of course use Disney World's extensive bus transportation system, however, there is no special transportation such as water taxi or monorail, and there's nothing outside of Jambo House and Kidani Village that you can walk to, not even the Animal Kingdom theme park. There's an incredible variety of dining options with an all-you-can-eat buffet restaurant, 
for fine dining, you have the Gico Signature Table Service Restaurant, and you also have Sanar Restaurant over in Kadani Village, which is one of my favorites in Disney World. In comparison to the other deluxes, Animal Kingdom has exceptional theming, higher than expected cultural authenticity. It is undeniably the most unique of all Walt Disney World's resorts. Nowhere else can you view exotic animals with your morning coffee from your hotel room. It has the best variety of dining options, the best recreational activities. So much to love about Animal Kingdom Lodge. Some that don't rate this resort point to its isolated location, although this is frequently exaggerated as it's only really Epcot and the Magic Kingdom where this is an issue. But this perception largely comes from the absence of special transportation, which is often the deciding factor in deciding not to stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge. the second resort in my tour will be headed towards the center of Walt Disney World in the Epcot Resort area for Disney's Beach Club Resort which opened in 1990 alongside Disney's Yacht Club which is its sister resort both of which share amenities and staff located on the shores of Crescent Lake. Disney's Beach Club is themed after the seaside cottages of 19th century Newport and the resort's blue colour distinguishes it from the Yacht Club. Inside, the seaside theming with New England paintings provides a pleasant beachside atmosphere. So both Beach Club and Yacht Club resorts are blessed with having arguably the best location and transportation within Walt Disney World. So you're a five minute walk away from the bustling activity of Disney's Boardwalk and the International Gateway entrance to Epcot between the France and United Kingdom Pavilion. It's a 10 to 15 minute walk over to Disney's Swan and Dolphin Hotel, a 15 to 20 minute walk over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Boat transportation is also available to these locations, but this isn't likely to save you any time compared to walking, but is a lot of fun. For the other parks and destinations at Disney World, you have the bus transportation. Lastly, if guests wish to travel to any of the resorts on the Skyliner, then you can access the Skyliner station at Epcot. Beach Club contains its own mini water park known as Stormalong Bay, which is shared with the Yacht Club. It's three acres in size and the largest water recreation area at any of the Disney World resorts. It has sand at the bottom, a lazy river, and an offshore shipwreck with a 230-foot water slide down the mast. Both resorts are home to the Ship Shape Massage Salon and Fitness, bike rentals, tennis, guided fishing excursions around Crescent Lake, and speciality fireworks cruises. When it comes to dining, Beach Club contains the Beaches and Cream budget table service restaurant and the all-you-can-eat Cape May Cafe, which is the character dining restaurant I recommend the most. Being such a short walk away from Epcot and given how much easier it is to get a reservation compared to the other character dining options. A very popular breakfast option before heading to Epcot. You can of course also take advantage of the dining over at the Yacht Club, the Boardwalk Inn and the Swan and Dolphin. There's no major surprises with the standard rooms, rather understated theming by comparison to some of the deluxes. Worth mentioning that most of the rooms feature an open doorway to the washroom area. Guests have the option to upgrade to improved views such as the views of Stormalong Bay or Crescent Lake. When comparing to the other resorts, the location and transportation options are incredible. With this in mind, very popular for guests attending the festivals. Also, undoubtedly the best pool area at Walt Disney World, no debate here. However, the rooms at Beach Club are quite plain compared to the other deluxes. Whilst they sleep up to five, this would be pushing it. Many don't appreciate having open doorway bathrooms. Also, depending on where your room is, it can get quite noisy given the proximity to Epcot. The quick service dining options are not the best. And lastly, transportation over to the Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom is not as efficient as it should be given the price. Heading over to the sister resort next, which is Disney's Yacht Club, themed to an elegant turn of the century New England Yacht Club. This resort has a more sophisticated vibe compared to its more light-hearted counterpart with its grey exterior and darker colours inside with antique looking furniture. With this in mind, there is a noteworthy contrast between the two resorts. 
Also worth mentioning that Yacht Club has one of Disney World's main convention centers which also contributes to the resort contrasting atmospheres. I won't repeat the overview of the amenities, location, transportation and storm along bay as we've obviously just covered those previously for Beach Club. So we'll head straight to the rooms. These contain very light nautical theming and are very classy looking but quite understated with no prominent Disney characters or Mickey ears on display. The washroom area is separated unlike Beach Club and the balconies are very spacious by comparison. As mentioned, both Yacht and Beach Club lack decent quick service options but have incredible table service restaurants on site in addition to options available from the other Crescent Lake resorts. Yacht Club does contain the Yachtsman Steakhouse, arguably the best steakhouse in Walt Disney World. You also have the Ale and Compass restaurant which is a great breakfast choice. When comparing to the other deluxe resorts just like Beach Club, Yacht Club is in a very desirable location and slightly closer to Epcot compared to Beach Club but further away from Hollywood Studios. It has the same excellent transportation options with plenty of table service restaurants nearby. I think I'm fair in saying your typical Disney World vacationer is going to prefer Beach Club with its brighter colours and more light-hearted atmosphere which is why I've struggled to recommend Yacht Club over Beach Club to my friends despite being an incredible hotel. A word commonly used when describing the ambience of Yacht Club is stuffy but I think it really comes down to the type of atmosphere that you prefer from a hotel. On the opposite side of Crescent Lake, just north of the Skyliner transfer station, we have Disney's Boardwalk Resort, which first opened in 1996. It's themed to turn of the century seaside vacations, with 1920s Atlantic City and Coney Island being key influences. Disney's Boardwalk Resort contains the Boardwalk Inn Hotel in addition to the separate Boardwalk Villas which is next to it and the Boardwalk Resort also contains the quarter mile long authentic looking Boardwalk Entertainment Strip so references to the Boardwalk can mean any of these things within the context of Disney World. The Boardwalk Resort has a festive feel with bright architecture and striped awnings and colourful flower beds. Both Boardwalk Villas and the Boardwalk Inn share a common lobby which is pretty modest in size for Disney World but contains some cool vintage furnishings and models of a miniature boardwalk and roller coaster. The creepiest chairs you will ever find. Many judge the Boardwalk Resort as being a very small and compact resort and whilst it is comparatively smaller in size it does have often overlooked space behind the boardwalk with beautiful gardens. The Luna Park Pool is themed to an Atlantic City Circus featuring a Coney Island roller coaster water slide. This is one of the better pools but noticeably smaller than Storm Along Bay at the Beach and Yacht Club Resort and not as impressive. Other amenities include its state of the art fitness center. You also have movies under the stars, bike rentals and a few small carnival games. The relatively spacious rooms at Boardwalk Inn do not disappoint. They incorporate the theme with an appropriate level of luxury. However, the bathrooms are slightly smaller than most of the deluxes. At risk of sounding repetitive, the location of the Boardwalk Resort is outstanding as with the two previous Crescent Lake resorts. One loop around Crescent Lake will take you past all these resorts within 20 minutes. As you know, these resorts have friendship boat transportation and the Skyliner station for Epcot is seven minutes away, but arguably the main highlight is being able to walk to Epcot inside five minutes and Hollywood Studios inside 20 minutes. For everything else, you have Disney's bus transportation. Disney's Boardwalk is one of Disney's premier dining, drinking and recreation spots with a variety of restaurants, bars, stores and entertainment venues on your doorstep. Its highlights include the Boardwalk Bakery, the Ample Hill Creamery Ice Cream Shop, the Flying Fish Signature Seafood Restaurant, the ESPN Sports Bar, the Jelly Rolls Piano Bar, and the Atlantic Dance Hall. When comparing to the other deluxes, the Boardwalk is the best Disney World resort for nearby restaurants and nightlife, in addition to its prime location near Epcot and Hollywood Studios, so a great option for young adults without kids. But if you are bringing the kids, it is quite difficult to recommend the Boardwalk Inn over the Beach and Yacht Club resorts. Whilst I love the theming at Boardwalk, kids are less likely to appreciate it, and crucially, 
they will much prefer having Stormalong Bay Pool as their resort pool, which boardwalk guests can't use, whereas you don't have to be staying at the boardwalk to visit any of the bars and restaurants on the boardwalk. And to add to that, the boardwalk is typically more expensive. Travelling north away from Crescent Lake, we're headed to the Magic Kingdom Resort area, which contains the four remaining resorts. First up, we have Disney's Wilderness Lodge on Bay Lake, which opened in 1994, adjacent to Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. The design of Wilderness Lodge is modelled after the atmosphere of the national parks of the western states and features both natural and Native American elements. The main building is inspired by the old Faithful Inn in Yellowstone National Park and contains the Deluxe Hotel section, in addition to its DVC wings and the Copper Creek and Boulder Ridge Villas. Its imposing lobby rivals Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge for theming, which is reminiscent of famous National Park lodges containing some great theming elements such as totem poles and an 82-foot fireplace representing colourful rocks of the Grand Canyon and Northwestern Native American artefacts. Its outdoor areas with pine trees and trails is where Wilderness Lodge really shines, which features hot springs and a man-made geyser modelled after Yellowstone National Park's Old Faithful. The rooms at Wilderness Lodge have very recently been reimagined. The old Native American pattern carpet is gone, as well as the old carved wooden headboards. I do wish they'd kept the latter. They do look more modern and refined, which replaces the previous more rustic style and brings improved lighting. The main Copper Creek Springs Pool is located in the centre of the resort, which contains a 67-foot water slide, which goes through the central rock. There's also a jacuzzi hot tub and one of the better kids splash zones that you'll find in Disney World. You also have the Boulder Ridge Cove quiet pool over by the Boulder Ridge Villas area. Its other amenities include a fitness centre, bike rental and a marina next to Geyser Point. Transportation at Wilderness Lodge is great for Disney, but doesn't compare that well to the other deluxes except for Animal Kingdom Lodge. Whilst being located within the Magic Kingdom Resort area, it's not on the monorail loop. Instead, you have the boat service, just like Fort Wilderness, as in my moderate resorts guide, which takes you to the Magic Kingdom in 15 minutes. It also travels to and from Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, and Disney's Contemporary Resort. So whilst it's a shame that it's not on the monorail, the boat service is an attraction in its own right, and the most enjoyable way to travel within Disney World. Wilderness Lodge has a decent variety of dining options. Its highlights include Artist Point with its Snow White character dinner, the Whispering Canyon Cafe, which is a fantastic breakfast choice. In comparison to the other resorts, it is typically the cheapest deluxe resort, so that's a huge plus. I think this is because it's often overlooked with it not being on the monorail loop, and also I think people often assume that its lodging is going to be similar to Fort Wilderness, which of course it's not. The only similarities are the theming and the peaceful sense of isolation. The pool is decent, but not in the top half for the deluxes. Despite being the cheapest deluxe resort, it is a contender for best theming and ambience, which in particular works perfectly for a Christmas vacation. Heading east now over to the first of two resorts located on the shores of Seven Seas Lagoon, arriving at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, Walt Disney World's flagship and fanciest resort, inspired by the Victorian era beach resort built along Florida's east coast. Its main building's exterior is modelled after the Mount Washington Resort in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, and the Hotel Del Coronado in California, with red gabled roofs and white walls. This resort also contains a convention centre as well as a Disney Vacation Club building, which has its own separate lobby and port co share. Worth mentioning that Mr. Walt Disney's intention with the first monorail loop resorts before he died was for each resort to mirror specific lands in the Magic Kingdom. So the Grand Floridian, built decades later, partly serves to reflect the Victorian architecture of Main Street. The gigantic lobby area inside the main building is one of the highlights of the resort containing a replica cage elevator, Italian marble floors with inlays of various Disney characters. During daytime hours, a grand pianist performs in the main lobby. Outside, you'll find perfectly manicured landscaping, 
There's two pools at the Grand Floridian. You have the larger but modest courtyard pool and then the smaller beach pool with great views of Seven Seas Lagoon and a water slide. You'll also find the kids splash zone here. Other amenities include a salon, a 24 hour fitness center, a variety of shops, paid boating experiences to Seven Seas Lagoon. The Grand Floridian is a strong contender for having the best location and transportation options in Disney World. The Polynesian Resort and the Transportation and Ticket Center are a short and very pleasant walk away across the banks of Seven Seas Lagoon. Guests are a single monorail stop away from the Magic Kingdom theme park, although the downside here is that the carriages will be busier for Grand Floridian guests. Also, you are the fourth monorail stop on the way back, which is why many guests staying at the Grand Floridian prefer to travel to the Magic Kingdom using the boat transportation, which takes three minutes, departing every 10 minutes. Or you have the relatively new option of walking. In 2020, Disney finished the construction of its walkway linking the Magic Kingdom with the Grand Floridian, which takes 10 to 15 minutes. This is a very pleasant walk, but not much shade, so might not be the best choice during those hot summer days. For Epcot, you can walk or take the monorail over to the Transportation and Ticket Center before transferring over to the Epcot monorail, but this is quite time consuming. The theming of the rooms isn't the strongest in my opinion. A Victorian theme can be quite difficult to execute without coming across as dated in an unintentional way. They also took away a lot of the Mary Poppins and Alice in Wonderland art. There's no storage under the beds or doorway to the restroom, only a door to the toilet and bathtub. It can be difficult to argue against the Grand Floridian having the best theme park view rooms. The Grand Floridian really excels with its dining choices, more so with upscale table service options. Most famously with Victoria and Albert's table service restaurant, very widely considered to be the best restaurant at Walt Disney World. Other highlights include the 1900 Park Fair character dining restaurant, Narcoosies, and the Enchanted Rose Bar, themed to Beauty and the Beast. You also have the 24-hour Gasparilla Grill Quick Service Restaurant. When compared to other deluxe resorts, the Grand Floridian is an undeniably elegant and luxurious resort, and the service from the cast members is second to none. It's another resort that works particularly great around Christmas. However, its luxury doesn't compare well with the non-Disney luxury resorts such as the Four Seasons or the Waldorf, but I suppose you could say that about all Disney deluxes. Its dining options are incredible and second only to Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's also the best resort for shopping. If you're traveling without children and you're looking for a more peaceful, luxurious resort, then I would say this may be one of the better options at Disney World. Despite being the best in a few areas, the downsides to the Grand Floridian are that it is the most expensive Disney World resort, which makes it feel a little overpriced by comparison, if I'm honest, in particular with regard to the unimpressive rooms and pool area. Worth keeping in mind that guests paying the cheaper nightly rate at the Polynesian can take the short trip over to the Grand Floridian to take advantage of the main benefits of the resort. Heading southbound in the opposite direction of the monorail will arrive at Disney's Polynesian Village, which opened all the way back in 1971 as one of Disney's first on-site hotels located on the banks of Seven Seas Lagoon. The resort has a tropical South Seas Polynesian island theme with its tiki torches, lush landscaping, lay necklaces, waterfalls and beautiful sandy beaches. The Polynesian Village Resort attempts to create a Disney World version of a laid-back paradise. Its themed outbuildings center around its ceremonial house, which has been subject to a substantial overhaul over the past 12 months, which will very shortly result in a new Port Cochere entryway and modified monorail station. In terms of transportation, it is only two stops from the Magic Kingdom on the monorail line when it's available, and it's a very short walk over to the transportation and ticket center. So even if the attached monorail station is not in operation, you still have great transportation. You also have the Grand Floridian walkway as mentioned in the Grand Floridian guide. The Polynesian is home to several casual dining establishments, buffets, lounges, and pool bars. Its highlights include the Kona Cafe and the incredibly popular Ohana Character Dining Restaurant. 
outside of the pandemic, you have the spirit of Aloha Dinner Show. Worth mentioning that the Polynesian is home to the best tasting Dole Whips inside Walt Disney World. The resort's largest pool, known as the Lava Pool, features a 142 foot long water slide in a volcano and the Kiki Tiki Splash Area. There's also an additional quiet pool. Other amenities include motorized boat rentals, campfire fishing and much more. Historically, the rooms at the Polynesian are known for being very spacious, with arguably the best use of theming at any of the resorts. However, at the time of making this video, the guest rooms are currently being refurbished with a Moana makeover coming very soon. These reimagined rooms will feature Moana themed artwork, including a mural that spans the length of a wall featuring Moana, Maui and other characters from the Disney film. In comparison to the other deluxes, this undeniably beautiful resort provides a fun and laid back but high end atmosphere. The views of Cinderella Castle and Space Mountain at night are stunning. Its transportation options are fantastic. It's one of the more popular choices for kids, but also appeals to adults with some of the best bars in Disney World. This resort is also an underrated way to view the fireworks from the Magic Kingdom with music from the beach. Despite this, the Polynesian is priced above most of the other resorts. Its lobby area can be quite loud due to the popularity of Ohana. And also, despite having some of the best casual dining options, the Polynesian does not provide an upscale signature restaurant, although you do obviously have the option of walking over to the Magic Kingdom or the Grand Floridian. The final resort in my tour is Disney's Contemporary Resort located on the shores of Bay Lake, commonly known as the resort with the monorail going through it. Despite its name, the Contemporary Resort is Disney World's oldest hotel which opened back in 1971. The Contemporary Resort is themed to Mr. Walt Disney's utopian ideals for the future from the 1950s and 60s, who is a big fan of monorails, etc. 60 years later, the resort now has a cool but unintended retro futuristic style. This theme and atmosphere is most prominent as you glide through the main A-frame tower via the monorail, arriving at the station which is built inside the tower. The majority of the resort's restaurants, gift shops and access to the monorail can all be found on the fourth floor, also known as the Grand Canyon Concourse. The minimalist design of the resort with the neutral colour scheme is in sharp contrast to the 90 foot tall colourful mural by Mary Blair, the same artist who worked on designing It's a Small World. Outside of the tower you also have the Garden Wing which also houses many of the resort's rooms as well as the Bay Lake Tower which is the standalone Disney Vacation Club Resort. The Contemporary Resort has some great dining choices, both table service and counter service. Its most popular restaurants are the California Grill and the Chef Mickey's Character Dining Restaurant. You also have the Wave and the very underrated Contempo Cafe counter service restaurant. Its standard rooms are slightly above par for space. They're unsurprisingly modern in their design. They have incredible views of the Magic Kingdom. Speaking of incredible, during the making of this video, it was announced that all nine floors in the tower are going to be completely refurbished to be themed with characters from Pixar Animation Studios' incredible films. Its main pool is located between the main tower and its garden wing. This contains a water slide, a kiddie pool and a water play area. You also have a separate quiet pool. Other amenities at the Contemporary Resort include the Olympiad Health Club, which is a fitness center and spa. There's also complimentary yoga classes, guided fishing excursions, boat rentals, volleyball, tennis and basketball. The Contemporary Resort's biggest strength is its distance to the Magic Kingdom, which you can get to in under 10 minutes, the fastest way to travel here. Alternatively, you can get there using the monorail, which also stops at the two Seven Seas Lagoon resorts covered previously. Outside of the pandemic, you can travel to Epcot via monorail by traveling to the Transportation and Ticket Center before transferring to the Epcot monorail line. In comparison to the other deluxes, 
Like some of the other convention center resorts, the Contemporary Resort focuses on luxury and convenience at the expense of its theming and ambience. The architecture feels quite dated and the attempts to modernize the resort in the 90s were sort of counterproductive. The pool is comparatively underwhelming as well. With the rooms, I don't think everyone is going to appreciate the use of IP at this particular resort. However, I do think the pics look great and the new direction will appeal to many guests. Despite lagging in a few areas, the convenience of travelling to the Magic Kingdom should never be taken for granted. You'll feel extremely smug walking past the long lines for the buses and monorail in the evenings after a long day. Also, staying at a hotel that has a monorail travelling through it has an enduring appeal which kids will always appreciate. So hopefully that covers what a deluxe resort is and hopefully it's helped you pick the right one for you. It's very difficult to rank the deluxe resorts, they all have their strengths and I think it mainly depends on which parks you intend on visiting the most. It has to be said that the deluxe resorts are exceptionally expensive, often difficult to justify over the moderates, but they do help guests ensure the best possible Disney World vacation, which I'm sure is what a lot of people are currently seeking. That's it for this video, I hope you have an awesome vacation whenever that is. Do check out my other videos if you're headed to Disney World anytime soon, and if you're interested in future Orlando vacation content, don't forget to subscribe.